The Burge Law Office specializes in RV lemon law nationwide. The following is not legal advice. For additional information, see rvlemonlaw.com. The RV Show USA. Start living the RV dream today. We often hear the term lemon RV tossed around, right? Well, the good news is that some manufacturers really have upped their game. The quality of their products is much, much better than just a few years ago. The bad news? Too many manufacturers are still putting out what I call as crappy junk. As an RV owner, as an RV buyer, what can you do to better protect yourself in the event you happen to buy a lemon RV? What is a defect diary? Why is it important to me as somebody who just bought a brand new RV? Well, let me explain why it's important, first of all, then, because really, if you don't understand why it's important, it really doesn't matter what else is going on. And the defect diary is really important simply because from square one, it's going to be your record of what goes wrong, the date, the time, the place, how the circumstances were and everything, when you notified the factory or the dealer, whether it's a call or whatever, it's where you keep your records of what goes wrong with your RV. And the reason that becomes critically important is because if you don't have accurate repair records or accurate records of when you complained, then it's going to be very hard for you to be able to prove a whole lot in court because it becomes a swearing contest, your word against theirs. And believe it or not, when you call up the factory and complain, they're making notes on their end of what's going on. And I have never in all these years seen a situation where the records that they produced, which they said were the notes, matched up with what the client said happened. What's the best way to document uh, or to communicate with the dealer or the manufacturer? The well, the easy way to document it is to have in your RV carry with you a small little notepad, usually one of those that's maybe two inches by four or three inches by five or something. Doesn't have to be very big and a spiral on one edge too so that you can flip the pages. Just carry it in there with the RV and you never use it for anything but that. And then whenever a problem happens, then you immediately, as soon as you can, stop, open up the little defect diary, write down the date, write down what happened, write down the circumstances, write down the time so that and, and what it was like that happened so that you've got a document that you created contemporaneous with the event itself. Then when you go to the next part where you either call the dealer or you call the factory and you complain about it, start making notes. The date, the time, what you said, who you talked to, what they said back to you. Make as detailed a note as you can. This is, this is one of those Murphy's Law things. As sure as you do it, you'll never need it. As sure as you don't, you'll end up wishing you did. How detailed do I need to go in this defect diary? I mean, little stuff, a piece of trim falling off, or, you know, how deep do I need to go and how specific on defects do I need to be? Well, that's, that's sort of a personal preference thing because if you pay $200,000 for an RV, you might have a higher level of expectation that things are going to be done right as opposed to if you buy a pop-up camper. But you have to use your own judgment on that mm -hmm. according to how much you paid for it and what you expected about it and maybe what you were told in buying it or along the way. Mm -hmm. How detailed you want to make it, that's a bit of a judgment call. You want to write down at the bare minimum the date, the time, what happened, what the circumstances were that happened around those circumstances, such as whether you were driving down the highway or you just sitting in the RV camped out when all of a sudden whatever it is happened. And make a note of the date and time and place that's really critical and also the explanation and any witnesses or people that were present in the RV or whatever. What percentage, generally speaking, what percentage of people that you take their cases for a, a, an RV a lemon law case uh, do not have a defect diary? Somewhere around 80 to 90 percent. And you still take those cases or? Yeah, I still take those cases because fundamentally people have no reason to lie about the problems that they've got. The real question is, have they documented it? And if they haven't documented it, then we turn to the repair orders. And the repair orders quite often will have a good bit of, of information in them that can be useful. But also the, the client can recreate that defect diary, so to speak, by just simply going back and looking at the repair order and remembering what happened. 
The problem is, as time goes by, you may not remember it as fresh as you do when you're parked on the side of the road and it just happened two miles up the road. I was going to ask about that. I mean, you know, if I bought my RV six months ago or a year ago and I've still got warranty remaining and I haven't documented anything, is it too late? How do I go back and how far can I go back in documenting, you know, the issues I've had? Well, it's not too late. Better late than never. And you can still go back as far as you can remember and as much detail and information you may have at hand. You can get out your repair orders and try to recreate it. Essentially, that kind of a defect diary, it really ought to happen from square one. When you first go on the lot, you start checking out RVs, you settle upon one. When you do your walkthrough, you should have that kind of a notebook with you so that you can make notes as you're doing the walkthrough of what's wrong. And part of the reason is because you want to be sure you've got your own record of what really was happening, as opposed to what gets written down in a repair order, which may have some abbreviations and strange words that you never said at all. And so document who is doing the walkthrough, who I'm talking with at the dealer, day, time, the whole nine yards, just in case. It sounds like, uh, it, you know, in court, you've got to have all that documentation. What better time to do it than when you're checking out your RV? Yeah, that really is true. And actually, you don't have to have it in court, but it's the difference between being able to prove it because you wrote it down and then just sitting there and saying, well, it happened. How many things do I need to wait for? Do I need to have a list of things that are uh, need to be repaired, warranty items, or uh, you know, before I go back to the dealer or every single time something happens? What are your, what are your suggestions on that? My suggestion on that is if it's a serious issue, and serious is a bit of a, a judgment call as well, but if it's a significant or a serious issue, then you want to go ahead and make your appointment. And we'll talk about that later, but you got to make that appointment and get things set up, even if it's only one defect. But if it isn't all that serious, then you can make a running list until you've got four or five things or however many you want to go ahead and then get in and have it taken care of. And how you make your appointment, how you schedule your appointment is very, very important, according to Ron Burge. It's also a subject for an upcoming video. In the meantime, if you feel that you may have a lemon RV, you just may have, you can get a free claim review by clicking on the link below. Remember now, education is the key to remaining a happy camper for a long, long time. Until next time, I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. Thanks for watching.